Apple introduced the iPhone XR last year. It's kind of an interesting proposition. It had specs that matched the flagship in a lot of ways, but it took out some stuff I think Apple presumed weren't of paramount importance to people. So the OLED display and the second camera. And it turns out Apple was right. The iPhone XR in very short order was the best selling iPhone in Apple's lineup. And they're sticking with the formula of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So in comes the iPhone 11. And the iPhone 11, it's a newer phone. It's clearly superior to the 10R in almost every way. And Apple's continuing to sell the 10R now at a discount. So the difference between those two phones is $100. So the question that I wanna to try to answer is, is it worth that 100 bucks? If you're in the market to get a new phone right now, which one should you buy? And if you have an iPhone XR, is that worth the upgrade? Let's find out. So think of the iPhone 11 as like the S version of the 10R. If you look at them, they look very similar. From the front, there's no discernible difference. The glass is stronger on the front and back, but you can't really tell that just by staring at the screen of the phone. Flip it over though, you've got different colors available now. The Apple logos move to the middle and there's that second wide angle camera. But for most of the phones, they are pretty identical. It's the same resolution, 6.1 inch liquid retina display. It's LCD and Apple does a great job with LCD. It's one of the best LCD panels out there. There's still probably a little bit of a stigma around having an LCD versus an OLED, but it's only by like the tech elite that would care. A lot of folks that I know and trust that have access to every phone out out there chose to use a 10R. The 11's got some other stuff too under the hood. It's got support for spatial audio and Dolby Atmos support. I can't tell how good these speakers are. It sure doesn't sound like surround sound to me, but I will say the speakers on the 11 are noticeably louder than they are on the 10R. So if you're a speakerphone person, then you're going to, you know, enjoy what's on the 11, I think a little bit more. It's a very similar looking phone. So if you want a phone that looks different and you're coming from a 10R, then look at the Pro, but if you want the subtle improvements that are in the 11, it does bring a lot of new things to the table. So obviously the biggest change, the biggest update, the most hyped feature of the iPhone 11, slow fees. Which I will never mention again. So cameras, the, the iPhone 11 is mostly about the cameras and the improvements you get when hardware and software kind of match together. So the big difference is going from a single 12 megapixel wide angle sensor to two sensors, that same 12 megapixel wide, but now another 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor. The front facing camera on the iPhone XR, I think was one of the worst features about the phone. It was seven megapixels, it just didn't look that good. So they upped the resolution from seven to 12. You now have a wide angle option. And if you wanna shoot video using your front facing camera, you now have 4K60 as an option, which is a really nice thing to have. You're gonna get a slightly brighter two-tone flash on the iPhone 11 and are no longer locked with portrait mode to just human faces. You can now take those beautiful bokeh shots of like your oatmeal in the morning or your dog's face. So if you look at some of the pictures side by side, right off the bat, differences might not be that noticeable. And in fact, in normal, well-lit situations, they're very subtle. But when you start getting into less than ideal situations, so low light or even nighttime, you start to see a huge difference. So look at the shoe wall, for example. It's indoor light. It's not low light, but it's not an ideal lighting situation. If you zoom in just a little bit, you can almost see the individual grains of boost on the shoe. But if you look at it on the iPhone XR, it just looks kind of like a blurry white strip. So a lot of the magic on the 11 is happening almost in real time. If you take a picture of a person outdoors, Apple can recognize what's a face and adjust the appropriate filters for that. It can notice what's a background, notice a sky, notice plants, and adjust things so the picture will look beautiful, but still look like a picture. It's not gonna do any weird facial smoothing like you see with some Samsung phones. It's gonna give you a good, true to life looking picture. All this stuff is happening in pretty much real time to give you that best looking shot that still manages to look like a natural photo. Perhaps one of the biggest selling points of the 11 and the 11 Pro is the addition of now a night mode here. And it's not a separate mode you have to activate. It automatically will turn itself on and just start working for you. And we just got the phones today, so I haven't had a chance to fully test night mode, obviously. But I did get a chance to take a look at my friend John Morrison's night mode shots, and you can see 
how good this is. In fact, even on par and arguably better, we get from the Pixel 3 line of phones. And it's interesting how Apple has done night mode here. They kind of let night be night and they detect a person, they'll kind of brighten that up as opposed to trying to make the whole shot look like a daytime like you see maybe with Huawei and sometimes with the Google phones. One's not better or worse, it's just a different approach that I think I can appreciate here. So the big difference is on the video side. So I mentioned you could shoot 4K60 on the front. You can also do that on the back and you can dynamically switch between the lenses while you are shooting. The one caveat that you can't be in that 4K60 mode. So look at the video that we shot here. You can see the dynamic range of the cement, something that you wouldn't really think about. You can see the detail that you get with the 11 that's lost with the iPhone XR. We're also really surprised how good video stabilization is with the iPhone 11. It was really good and we were walking at a pretty brisk pace and it looks very stable. One note though, you're not gonna get stabilization on the ultra wide, but the general thought is the wider you are, the less you get stabilization anyway. It's obviously cameras, the big story here, but there's some other things that are also obviously different between the two phones. First, battery life, you will get an hour extra time, and that's video watching time on the 11 versus the 10 R. You're gonna get the A13 Myonic in here, which you're not gonna notice much of a difference now, but if you plan on keeping your phone for two to three years, that last year, year and a half, when you'll see the big difference between that processor jump. If you keep your phone in water, you're worried about waterproofing, IP67 versus IP68, it's a difference of one meter. So you can get one meter for 30 minutes on the 10R versus two meters for 30 minutes on the iPhone 11. So 11 also has this U1 chip, which isn't going to be turned on until iOS 13.1 comes, but essentially it's gonna make your phone spatially aware of other iOS or other Apple things that are near it. So data speed's obviously important, and the iPhone 11's got a few legs up over the 10R. So gigabit LTE support, what that means is you're theoretically you can get faster LTE. Gigabit LTE is kind of the fallback, the backbone of 5G when that network drops out. So the other is why Wi-Fi 6, theoretically about 40-ish percent faster, better Wi-Fi connections in crowded areas, like if you're in stadiums, for example, and a little bit faster Face ID. I never found Face ID to be slow at all on the 10R or even the iPhone 10. It is a little bit quicker here, and you get some wider angles. You still can't put it flat and kind of look at the phone, but anything that improves sort of the security of your phone, I'm all for, and anything that improves the speed is also positive. Definitely not a reason alone to get the iPhone 11, but a nice little side effect if you decide to spend the money. Is the iPhone 11 worth an upgrade from the iPhone 10R? And traditionally, my answer is no. It's not usually worth going to the next gen phone if you have the prior. I'm gonna make a bit of an exception here though with the 10R to the 11. I think the differences in the camera are so drastic that if you rely on your camera as your only way you take pictures, I think it's worth the upgrade actually to go from the 10R to the 11. Would you consider how well the 10R has held its values for selling it on third-party sites or trade it back into Apple? You're never paying the full cost, presumably, of that iPhone 11 unless you're gonna give it to somebody else. If you want the best display you can get on an iPhone, then look at the iPhone 11 Pro, look at an iPhone 10, look at an iPhone 10s or 10s Max. There are a lot of other options available. But if you can get past the LCD, which is still a very high quality LCD panel, you're gonna get an amazing phone for your dollar. If you're coming from something that's older, so you're coming from an iPhone 8, or even could be made even coming from an iPhone 10 or anything older than that, I think Smart HDR is really important. It makes the pictures look great if you're coming from anything like an iPhone 8. So if you're considering picking up either of these phones, the 10R or the 11, I think it's worth the extra 100 bucks to go for the 11. The changes might not be that obvious outside of colors and the extra camera, but the things that are different are significant. And those little changes, I think, add up to a hugely better phone. And for a hundred bucks that you'll get back when you trade it in in a few years, I think it's worth the extra money.